Hey guys, it's Allie. I'm here for some yoga and I actually got a request for some arm balances. So that is what we are going to do today. And we're going to start with the crow pose. This one's pretty cool. It's fun. It's a balance, but it's also about wrist mobility, ankle mobility, and line of sights and scapular retraction. So we'll go over all those fun things and then do it while the little flow to warm up and then get into it. So it'll be more informational, less yoga, but you guys let me know what you like. If you want to do individual work, if you want an all yoga flow, your class. So just let me know what you want. But right now we're just going to start with some centering. So close your eyes, maybe lay on your back. That's where we're going to start our flow and just settle in. So just take some time to arrive here and just let go of your day. Maybe it just started, maybe it's just ending. Wherever it is, wherever you are, just be right there. And then everything else you can just let go of. Eyes are closed and just start to tune into your breath. Just experience it first. Don't push it. Just feel what the inhale does to your body. Feel what the exhale does. Feel the lungs expand, feel the ribs open up, the whole circumference of your body get bigger, and then return back to you. It's a beautiful thing. So just keep flowing with that deep breath. Maybe just start off with a little gratitude that we're breathing, that we're healthy enough to do this practice. And we can go from there. Keep breathing, deep inhale, deep exhale. Let anything go that you need. Maybe you've been carrying on to something and now's the time to drop it. So deep inhale, let go, exhale. You're gonna take a few more breaths. I'm gonna back up and we are gonna start on our backs today. So keep breathing. And when you're ready, knees come into the chest. And we're just gonna start by rolling side to side, massaging out that low back. And then some hip circles, nice and big, really getting into everything here. Switch directions. Keeping that breath going the whole time. Then legs go up and I point and flex. So we're starting with some ankle mobility and we're gonna have some other little drills for this as well. But right now just point flex, roll in one direction, then the other. Opposite point and flex. And then come to a bent knee, hands out to the side, and these are small, so just side to side rocks. Those knees right over the hips and then just creating a little arch at first. And then maybe you get a little bit bigger. So start going lower to the ground. The lower to the ground you go, the more control you'll need with your abdominals. So really start working that. Then we're going to go into dead pug position, which is a horrible name, but an awesome pose. So hands are right up over the shoulders, feet up over the hips, and then just point and flex everything. This is where we're going to warm up those wrists. So circle one direction and then the other. This is a mild inversion, so everything's flowing back. Rotate circles, and then the other direction. Then we're going to crisscross the knees, rock and roll, and come back and forth. So now we're going to go and then come on up, gentle hold to boat pose. So boat pose one, hold, breathe. Work that core, open the chest, shoulders down and back. Roll back. Boat two, straight legs this time. Here, open. 
open everything up. Hold and breathe. Just creating a little heat in the body. Get everything flowing. One more rock and roll. And with control, boat pose. There you go. Boat pose, we tend to keep. Let's roll down and back. Then we're gonna bring the knees back and softly come in and we're actually gonna do a variation of happy baby. So it's single leg happy baby. So take your right leg as if you're doing a double, maybe hand goes to foot, maybe it doesn't hit so it's on shin and you're gonna pull back your knee as if it's going into your armpit. This leg, if this feels comfortable, can straighten. That's gonna be an intense stretch down the psoas where we're opening the hip on the opposite side. So if this is too much, bent leg, if not straight leg. Just close your eyes and breathe here. It's gonna feel a lot different than regular happy baby because it's very focused unilaterally and it's emphasizing the stretch. One more breath and then just simply switch sides they're probably going to feel different. That's okay. So again, that leg can be straight or bent, whatever feels best for you today. It's really not about forcing your body into something. It's about feeling it out and seeing what works for you. So actively pulling this back, really emphasize the stretch. One more breath. Let it go. We're gonna roll up and actually not completely, we're gonna figure four while we're still on the ground with bent legs. So our right leg, our ankle goes over our knee and a little below, flat foot, and I'm in a figure four. So you can stay here the closer you come up, the deeper the stretch. So if this feels a little tight, hang back. If not, come on up, but then maybe you add a rotation. So we're just going simply side to side within a figure four. <sighs> Straighten the legs, sit up, check in with that posture, point and flex. <sighs> and then lean back any degree that feels good. Other leg, figure four, stay put. You're really gonna get that stretch or if you wanna add, a little movement, just be very gentle on the knees. <sighs> Keep that breath going. That's really the only part you need to be doing yoga. <sighs> nice. We're gonna flip over and go into cat and cow. And what we're gonna start off with is that neutral tabletop and inhale, lower the belly, rise up. Exhale, round. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, round. A few more and flow with your breath here. All right, so here's a pretty intense warm up for the wrist. So go at your own speed and stop if there's any pain. But hands are like this neutral tabletop. One is going to flip under. And then if that still feels okay, you can rock back and forth. Again, these are intense, so just go until you feel a light stretch. This is just a warm up. We're gonna flip. No point in forcing your body into something. Now we can do two at a time. We're gonna face the fingers towards each other. Hold there, or you can rock lightly side to side. All my weight is, not all my weight, most of my weight is leaning back, so I just have a light pressure on my wrist. I'm going more back than forward. The more forward I go, the more weight I have on my hands. And now flip both of those. You might only be able to do one of these at a time, or both, whatever feels good. And just side to side. <sighs> Sit back, hero's pose. And then here, we're just gonna make a triangle and pull up, like you're doing a wrist lock, lift the wrist, create as big a triangle as you can, trying to close this distance, pushing it, and then warming up the wrist. <sighs> Pros, a lot of wrist work in case you haven't realized. <sighs> All right, 
So ankle mobility. We're gonna bang out a few lunges and work some ankle mobility. So hit down dog. Maybe curl out the feet, walk the dog. Just find the one that's right for you. Knees can be bent. Don't feel like you have to straighten. That back ankle doesn't have to hit the floor. This is really a posterior chain stretch, not necessarily to open the ankles. That's where the lunges come in. So left foot is going to come in and across and go to that lunge position. So we're in that lunge, but I'm going to do something that's going to make a lot of people go nuts. I'm going to tell you to take your knee over your ankle. This is for a stretch. If you want, you can take that back knee down, but you're going to go forward and back. I like doing this with my back leg open. If that feels better for you, yogi's choice. So you're actually going to go back and forth very lightly, very mindfully, and we're hitting that ankle mobility. We're going to get deeper into this than just another stretch, but just to start, plant those hands, foot goes back, maybe walk it out, soft neck. Can say yes or no, get some mobilization there. And then the other foot, other side. So find that lunge that feels good. And then with intention, I'm going back and forth and taking my knee over my ankle just to get a little mobility. You can actually hold it if that feels better. If you're inflexible in the ankles, your heel will tend to lift. So maybe hold that gently down, rock forward and back. If you do a lot of back squats and your heels lift, this one's a really great warm up too. All right, send it back to down dog. Feet are gonna walk forward. Hang out in that forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, slow, slow rise. All the way, find the length. Hands come to chest. Take a breath here. We're gonna actually go over to the wall to work a little scapular retraction and get a little deeper into the angles. So scapular retraction, shoulder blades. If you think when you're in a plank and you push through that motion right here, that is scapular retraction. We did L-sits the other day where we were pushing down. That's what I'm talking about. So a really good way to get into that is to go to the wall and push against it. Push, 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 like your spine is going to the other side of the room, and then come in. Push, push, push. It's a very small movement, but you'll feel it. It's like old school boxers getting whacked in that stomach. That, oh, that's the motion you want. So you know, yoga, visualize getting hit in the stomach. So push, 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 and come back. So with crow pose, it is a little about strength. And if you want to build strength, if you're not there yet, a really good way to do is you can do push-ups against the wall. So push up, come to full length, scapular retraction, press back, press in. Scapular retraction, press out, press in, push up. And you can just drill these until you're warm, until that strength builds up. So. That is the strength, that is the scapular retraction, and we'll go a little into mobility of the ankle. So you're actually gonna go to your forearms and lean against the wall. And what I'm doing here is you stay where you are. I'm getting a smaller angle on my foot. So if I'm inflexible on my ankles, I'm probably here. If I wanna go a little deeper, I go down the wall and I go further away. So the further away from the wall, the more mobility I have in my ankles. So maybe you start here and that's where you're at and then you slowly build step by step to get out here. What I'm doing is this angle is shortening. So my footwork is getting more and more flexible. That's gonna be important for your squats. So these can be drilled. You can just bang them out in your living room all you want. Now we're going to go into Malasana, 
which is just a fancy word for a squat in yoga. What I like is my feet a little wider than my hips and my toes turned out. Um, this is for yoga squat, not a lifting squat. Those are a little different. So, and when I squat, I think of my knees pushing away. So like they're pushing behind me, our knees tend to cave. So deep inhale, exhale, hands come through center. I go down and if you stop here, that's fine. If you're with me, you can come all the way down here and that's where that ankle mobility came in. So my heels are touching right now. If you're not as mobile, you'll probably lift up a little, which is fine. We can actually work on the crow with that, but for squats, this will get you there. So just holding this is strengthening and stretching. Then you can interlace the fingers, take the elbows, push away the knees and have the fists come to hands. That's going to open you up. That's that knee movement pass there and just breathe. Reach forward, keeping those knees pushing back. They're going to want to cave. The whole body is going to go like this. Fight it. One arm up. Rotate that back, other hand, then the other. Inhale, lift completely, and just shake everything out. So we're gonna go from squat to crow. That's how I like to enter into it, and I'll walk you through it. Before we get there though, so with crow pose, you're literally balancing on your arms. You're gonna feel like you wanna fall forward or back. If you fall sideways, I don't know what to do with that, but there you go. So if you feel like you're falling forward, there are a lot of great teachers that will give you <laughs> the skills not to do that. I'm not one of them. I'm going to tell you, you're going to fall. <laughs> it's going to happen. I did it. I did it once. It was really scary before I did it. And then once I did it, it was all good. So grab a huge pillow, a blanket, practice, know you're going to fall. No, you're not going to break and just keep going with it. So that'll be really good. So here, what we're going to do. Oh, sorry. If you feel like you're falling back, yoga block or the edge of the couch is really great. Prop your feet up and that's going to hold you and then do it. It's going to make more sense when I do the pose if you're not familiar with it, but work on those two. We're still filming. My bad. <laughs> okay, so inhale, exhale, we're gonna go to that squat. So you can stay here, or if you wanna build to that crow, flat hands, we've warmed up our wrists. So come up on your toes and lift. If you want a little cheat, this is where you can put your feet up on the couch or up on that yoga block. And so we're doing, um, Row, not crane. Crane is straight arms and your, your knees are in your armpits. This, my knee is going to balance right around my tricep level. So I'm here. I lift up. I come here. And when I lift in the air, I'm going to think about my feet going to my glutes, making that as small as possible. And my sight line, you tend to look down right in between your hands. And what you'll do is you'll follow your sight so you'll actually roll. And that's how people fall forward. You're gonna look about two feet in front of you. So if you have a yoga mat, if you're in the middle of the mat, look at the edge of your mat. Um, if not, just guesstimate two feet. So lift up, come here, find that sight line, maybe one foot, then the other, and lift. So I take my feet, I come here. I moisturize. I'm kind of sliding everywhere. So pro tip, don't moisturize right before yoga. You'll be slidy and sweaty. <laughs> but come here, lift, and come on in. So you'll shake. That's just strength. It's great. Look forward. Heels come into my glutes. Come in and out of it. The longer you can do it, that more you're going to feel in your wrists. So if you've got the strength to do it, do it, but then come out, rewarm up the wrists, and then enter into it. So lift, find that spot, heels up, 
and then come there. And that's your crow pose. So you'll have to do drills for it for a while. Then you can actually hang out in it. That's pretty cool. Do that. Probably do it when I'm not all slippery. But have fun with those drills. You're going to fall. It's cool. It's like life. We get back up. Be safe about it. Laugh at yourself and then get back up. But keep practicing. Let me know how it goes and let me know if you guys want more instructional videos like this or just ax it and go yoga flow. So when you're done, come on down. Just get comfortable. Let the eyes close. Let everything that just happened be in the past, whether you succeeded, whether you kept falling. It was all effort and it was all good. Just come in back to that breath. Deep inhale, deep exhale. Keep breathing and just let it all go. I hope you received exactly what you needed from this class. Namaste.